Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile back with another video today and today I'm going to be showing you how to make some isopod setups. We're going to be using these KISS bins. You can buy them from Dollarama for I think it's either two or three dollars for a pack of three. So really good deal, super dirt cheap. Just before we get into the video, I just wanted to ask you guys if you are new to the channel or you haven't seen my videos before, make sure you click that subscribe button. Make sure you go check out some of my other videos. There'll be links in the description to merch as well as all my social medias, including Instagram, which is on the screen somewhere right now for you guys to go check out. Now with that being said, let's get into the video. So you guys have found your way to this video wondering how you can step up your isopod game. Well, I've just done that recently and I am pleased with the results thus far. And so now I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your own custom bins with proper ventilation. These ones I made a couple months ago, going around a month and a half ago, I decided to create these bins. Let's talk about what all you need. First off, you're going to need the container. You can see here, I have the KISS container. These guys are super cheap, really easy. They melt easily, which is a key. You'll see later on why. These guys work great. I have some wood for the isopods. You can see this cork bark here. I also have some, some sort of branch that I found in one of my tanks and I, I snap that into several little chunks that's just going to provide more food and nourishment for the isopods. If you guys are wondering what isopods I'm going to be creating a home for, make sure to go check out the video in one of the top corners up there. You'll see it pop up. It is the unboxing of these awesome isopods. Yes, it has been like a month that these guys have been sitting in their other containers, but now is the time. With that said, you guys are going to need isopods to put in the new containers. You're going to need a substrate mix. I have some leaf litter in here. And then one of the key things, you don't have to have these, but they work really well, these ventilated mesh discs. So these make creating ventilation for the isopods extremely simple. All they are is a mesh disc that you will burn a hole into the container. You guys will see me all do this and you'll just stick this inside and fold over the metal tabs and boom, you have instant ventilation. Now the last thing you're going to need for my version is a soldering iron. This one cost me $40. It came with like six or eight different tips for it. This one that I'm using in this video is going to be the blade tip because we're cutting holes in things, not necessarily poking holes in things. If you're a reptile keeper and you're making your own custom bins, this is an invaluable purchase that will last you well over your $40. So I strongly recommend getting one. Another item we're going to need is some sphagnum moss. Now this is just long fiber sphagnum moss, New Zealand. So it is the higher quality stuff. You can use any moss that you like. I just have this lying around, so that's what I'm using. I'm rehydrating it just so it gets all of its water content back because we need to make a humid side for the isopods and a drier side. And the very, very last thing that I'm going to use is a Sharpie. This is just to mark the little holes. You'll see where the Sharpie comes into play a little bit later in the video, but so I know I've talked to you guys a little bit about these boxes already. Basically what we're going to be using is like I said, the KISS boxes, super easy to melt, really nice to deal with. They don't have a ton of fumes to them, which is also nice or, or that I find at least. I do have right here a fan and the door is that way. So I'm just blowing all the smoke in the air out that way once it's going on. Um, but the first thing that you're going to need to do is plug in your thermal gun. Now this is something that if you're under 18 or you've never used one before, I burned myself with it. It sucks. So if you're under 18 or your parents don't trust you with very hot things, uh, maybe get them to help you with this. If you're over 18, which most of you guys are, let's have some fun. Now that our thermal gun has heated up, what I'm going to do is start the burning process. Like I said, this sucks if you drip this anywhere on you. You'll see just how fast this goes. I won't even speed it up. It's that easy. And now what we're going to do is take our little, I don't know, round mesh disc and just insert it into the hole we created. And even if your hole is not the perfect size, the nice thing about this is it's kind of forgiving uh, because there is that black ring around it. It kind of holds any 
imperfections or anything that you might see. I reckon that looks awesome. We have our ventilation in place. In some of my other containers, I actually did poke a hole in the lid too. Those little circles that I found fit perfectly inside one of those. Unfortunately, they offered a little bit too much ventilation and my cultures were drying out too quickly. Next up, all we really have to do is grab our substrate, which, and I like to put about an inch, inch and a half of substrate in the, in the tank. So I like to put about an inch to an inch and a half of substrate in the bin uh, total. So I'm not gonna put quite that much in right now just because I do need to dump the culture in as well and I'll add all the, the stuff from the culture just because you never know what babies will be chilling and what babies need to go inside the new tank. So here's just that log that I showed in the beginning of the video. I just put that on the dry side and then on the moist side, I grab a handful of sphagnum and just layer it against that back wall. There's the moist side. Now obviously the moist side you want away from the ventilation hole because it kind of defeats the point of a moist side if it's right next to the ventilation. Split some cork bark here. Uh, a little bit less. Go. that over top like so and so you have a little bit of it over top of the sphagnum a little bit in the what will be the drier area it's still kind of moist over there because this is fresh substrate that I mixed up and if you're wondering what is in the substrate mix all the substrate mix is is organic black earth the cypress mulch some coconut core and a little bit of worm castings you can mix in things like leaf litter, you can mix in things like sand, that kind of deal. I just kept it really simple and it seems to be working so far. So the only thing you have to watch is that when the organic black earth dries out, it stays really hydrophobic and it can be hard to rehydrate. So that's something that you gotta keep in mind. Last thing that we need to add is a little bit of botanicals. And so just grab some leaf litter, throw it in there, and then these are the Hoffman Sagai. These guys are pretty small still. Uh, they're about like half grown, somewhere around there. Living life in their little egg crate. Uh, you guys can go, friends. Boop. First one's down, go follow your friend. Yeah. Sorry, I should be doing this this way. It's just, it's so hard working off of a reflection. Bro, look, he's my little friend. I don't have many friends. For the other ones, I'm going to pick this up and I'm just gonna dump them into the tank here. There is actually quite a bit of botanicals and stuff right there, so nestle that down nice and gently. And there we have it. A wicked looking isopod bin. I enjoy it. This should be quite functional for these guys. I know the Hoffman Sega I like it a little bit drier uh, than most isopods, so I probably won't miss the dry side very often but about once a week or once every 10 days, I like to go in and give a good soak down to the sphagnum moss just to make sure that it continues to have some moisture in case they need it. But that does it, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and finish all the other cultures and come back to you closing out the video. Alrighty, and here we have some larger shoebox containers that I also custom made. Very similar method to what you guys saw, but instead of cutting the holes, what I actually did is melt metal mesh into the side same exact method you just push the metal mesh into the container and solder it in and it stays there it's not coming out because it's actually melted into the plastic but this is just kind of like a proof of concept these are three of my isopod bins you can see some skirted ones there or i think these are onuscus oncellus see a couple more down there these guys are the peach. You can see some there. It's a little baby. And these are my maculatum. The awesome zebra isopod. Just showing you that it works with larger containers as well. It doesn't have to be the little tiny kiss boxes. These are also 
kiss containers just in a shoebox size. Here we have it, the final cultures. I'm ducked down because the cultures are so much lower than I am. I think they turned out really well. Uh, if you guys want an update in a couple months just to see how they're doing, see if there's any more population or any less population, let me know. I can certainly do that for you guys. Something that's important to keep in mind is that each individual species does require their own conditions. So some of them I'll be misting more, some of them I'll be misting less, that kind of deal. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you learned something, make sure you click that like button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, leave them in the comment section down below. If you want to see more isopod, more reptile builds, all that kind of deal, make sure you click that subscribe button and play ding dong ditch with the doorbell next to it. That way you get notified every single time I post a video. Thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you later. Peace.